Hi, I'm Inka Land. Let's discuss trichotillomania, OCD, and NAC supplement. So NAC, and acetylcysteine, is a precursor supplement for the amino acid cysteine that's naturally found in the body. It's not currently FDA approved for any obsessive, compulsive, or related disorders. However, there is interesting research, promising research, suggesting it might be beneficial. So I'm going to discuss about these conditions, about the supplement, what it does in your brain and body, and how it might help the symptoms. First, let's make sense of the terms. Body-focused repetitive behaviors are classified in the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorder, under the obsessive, compulsive, and related disorders. But they are different things. So obsessive, compulsive disorder, and then body-focused repetitive behaviors are different disorders. BFRPs include things like skin picking, nail biting, hair pulling, and excessive grooming. So for example, take someone with trichotillomania, a hair pulling disorder. Someone with this disorder might be pulling their hair or picking their hair or eyelashes with or without awareness. This can lead to significant loss of body hair, for example, patchy alopecia, and it's a very distressing condition and it can even be painful. Most people with trichotillomania also have some other body-focused repetitive behavior like skin picking or nail biting or lip chewing. Then moving on to OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Someone with OCD typically experiences two things. Number one, uncontrollable and recurring thoughts obsessions, and number two, repetitive behaviors, compulsions. They're not always body-focused. They can be things like having to shower all the time, having to check the stove, is it on, is it off, returning to the apartment to check the light several times, or excessively washing their hands. So that's how they are different. But one similarity between the two is that there seems to be a strong genetic component underlying both. So they are heritable to some degree. Second similarity is that they share some of the same neurobiological underpinnings, so similar brain-based mechanisms like reduced GABA levels and excessive glutamate signaling, for example, in the orbitofrontal cortex and striatum, which are crucial for impulse control and decision making. So now we understand the difference between OCD and body-focused repetitive behaviors and how does NAC relate to everything. So there is an interesting line of research that shows that it may relieve the symptoms. And this applies to both the OCD symptoms and, for example, trichotillomania symptoms. I'm going to discuss now about the research in trichotillomania. But for example, in one study, trichotillomania patients used NAC for 12 weeks. And after the 12 weeks period, actually already after the week nine, 56% of these patients had reported much or very much improvement in their trichotillomania symptoms. This was a placebo controlled study. So they also had another group who didn't receive NAC and only 16% of that group improved in their symptoms. So there is a clear difference between these two groups. So that's quite exciting. There are also interesting case studies. So for example, here are two quite similar case studies. Um, one is 19-year-old woman and the other one is 23-year-old woman. Both had trichotillomania and patchy alopecia. And both had tried traditional medications like fluoxetine, which is an SSRI medication, and psychotherapy. But both were treatment resistant. They didn't get relief from these treatments. So they were put on a trial for NAC supplement, 1200 milligrams a day. And in both cases, they got significant relief in symptoms. And in fact, in both cases also, the hair completely grew back. I think this is huge. Interestingly, NAC also has been studied in other neurological conditions and has shown to be quite beneficial. Um, I also have a video of my own experience using NAC 
for my migraines that I was suffering from when I was younger. And for me, NAC was helpful. I did a full review and you can check the video if you're interested in learning about that. So I assume you're thinking, why would an amino acid supplement relieve neurological symptoms? At least I was curious. So I went to look into the mechanisms and here's what I found. So firstly, let's start with the notion that trichotillomania, for example, is generally treated with drugs that target serotonin, that is SSRI medications or traditional antidepressants. These haven't been extremely effective and it has been very inconsistent. So the effect with NAC suggests that there are other neurochemicals to target that may have even a bigger effect. So NAC does a few things. Firstly, NAC lowers excessive glutamate levels via multiple cascades, but throughout these cascades, uh, it normalizes glutamate signaling in the brain. And therefore, it reduces that excessive glutamatergic uh, signaling in the brain cells that is linked to OCD and body-focused repetitive behaviors. Secondly, NAC can balance dopamine levels, partially due to the same mechanism. And we know that urges and repeated behavioral patterns are usually linked to dopamine. And thirdly, NAC is the precursor of the main antioxidant, glutathione, in the body. And therefore, it has the ability to lower inflammation in the body. Okay, friends, so this was a brief overview of NAC supplement in the context of some neuropsychiatric and psychological outcomes and disorders. I hope it helped. Ask your questions in the comments and watch my other videos too if these topics interest you and make sure to subscribe to the channel too. See you in the next video.